Candace and my sister Janice. And boy, we have a lot to discuss today. Um, so our topics today are Travis Scott puts on a killer performance. Joe Button claims he's bisexual, comes out as bisexual. Love and hip hop and their drama. And then the 14 year old girl that was missing who is now found. And there's more background to that story. So let's start off with Joe Button. Well, first off, I do want to say we, okay, we did a show earlier, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, but Joe Button came out as being bisexual. Um, and then he turned around and said it was just uh, a publicity stunt to feel like those who are in the gay community. He actually said that? Yeah. He said that it was a, a, a stunt. Like he, he's not really bisexual, but he felt like those who are in the LGBTQ community get more attention. So that's why he said it. Okay. Yeah, he said that he wasn't. He's not bisexual, but now people are thinking that he really I is, think he is, and he's trying to back, you know, backpedal. My God, I just wanted to do it for the attention. Mom, what are your thoughts about that? To state your earlier thoughts. I don't even remember. <laughs> well, my earlier thoughts. Were. So much happened with the first show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember why. I don't. I'm gonna say is he's already part of his is in his career. So oh yeah. He, he's gonna be yeah. in whatever. So whatever. I don't see the point of him. He's at his to, peak. Yeah. I don't see the point of him lying to get more yeah. publicity or attention. Yeah. Like, you're already a celebrity. Yeah. You're already Everybody famous. knows who you are. So what's the point of doing that unless you really are bisexual? Mm-hmm. I say, I think he was kind of telling the truth, because that's a weird flex. It is. That's a weird flex to say, you know, I'm bisexual when I'm not. But I remember him being on Love and Hip Hop, and, you know, he was with Sin, his baby mom, and how they were having issues where he wouldn't sleep with her. And I'm like, and that's a beautiful girl, you know? She's beautiful. But also, they had sex when they have a kid. Well, yeah, but after she, remember she used to complain about, mm-hmm. after the kid was born, how he wasn't, like, with like with her no more like he was just there and always like stayed to himself uh that was like well that kind of to me says maybe maybe he just wasn't attracted to her type at that time maybe he was swinging he was with uh what's her name to harry for like years years. years. she even made a comment saying how he's not bisexual she was with him for years but she never got that vibe from him and and that it really was like just to get attention because he feels like the LGBTQ community have a lot of power. Which is so weird to me, which what it is is the LGBTQ community, they're uh, united in fighting against wrongdoing against them. They're united. Whereas a lot of other communities don't unite in such they'll have two sides where they argue, well, this is why we should fight for this cause and this is why we shouldn't, versus when it comes to the LGBTQ community, they are in a united front. Something is wrong for one of them, something is wrong for all of them. And I think that's great. That's how all communities should be, mm-hmm. but that's not the case. And I think people feel like the LGBTQ community have a lot of power because they work together and get shit done versus other communities. I don't think people, not anymore, people try to shut them down um, to whereas a lot of our, like, I guess African Americans, when we try to have, like, um, what the hell is it? Oh, it's my train of thought. When you, you know, like, when you uh, advocate for something. Like, like, for instance, in the, well, what is that called when you team up with a group and you guys protest, when we have protests? Like, we don't have a lot of people backing us up to where us, nobody really steps on the LGBT community when they are protesting or advocating for themselves. That's what I was trying to touch on. But go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, if you think, like, we were supposed to talk about the Kyle uh, Rittenhouse or whatever his name is, the one who went to a protest from out of town with the AR-15 and shot and killed two people and injured a third. He's on trial now. He's, he was, he's 17 years old. Like, just think about how he's being viewed. A lot of people are defending him. A lot of people are saying, you know, he defended himself, but he literally went there looking for trouble. Mm-hmm. But people, his like, mom drove him and his there. mom drove him there. She should be arrested too. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he's getting, like, defense, and then he got thousands of dollars, like, like, over half a million dollars was donated to him uh, for his defense, and uh, like there's videos of him partying with partying with people that feels like he did the right thing because he said he was going there to help protect 
property. He was going there looking for a fight, and he, it was illegal for him to first of all cross state lines with a weapon. That was one. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. He's under age. He's 17. He had no business having an AR-15. That's also illegal. And people are defending him. Whereas you think about a case like Trayvon Martin, mm-hmm. 17 so years old, all he had was some skittles. tea and some skittles. He was walking in the wrong neighborhood, going to his father's house, and they vilified this boy. Oh, he smoked weed. Oh, he got in trouble in school. He will always oh my God. Like it it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy to me, like, the two different views. And it's also because of the two different colors. colors. Mm-hmm. Which brings us to another topic that's... <laughs> All right. So, um, moving along, I keep saying this is so freaking hilarious to me, but, well, let me take that back. Well, I'm saying it's hilarious, but the situation is definitely not funny. I can laugh but now that I've calmed down. Travis Scott and his killer performance, literally, this past weekend oh in Texas. Um, so, at Astral World, I think it was eight people that had passed away. And then, like, close to 300 that was injured. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was performing, and people was passing out. There was medics in the audience trying to uh, resuscitate people, resuscitate people, and he never stopped the show. He was saying, stop the show, stop the show. He was just performing, and, like, the look on his face was just so, like, oh, demonic. Like, he just kept going and going. And, um... Yeah, I think, and this concert happened, like, it still continued to go on for that weekend. I feel like it should have been completely shut down. Yeah. So he put out an apology video. Kylie Jenner was there, the mother of his two children. Um, and she said at the time she didn't see anything, but clearly on her social media social, social media platform, she recorded, and literally in, in her recording, she passed over the ambulance, and she still posted the video. Mm. And she didn't know what was going on. Mm. But she saw um, ambulance. Literally on her story, <laughs> her reel, you can see in the crowd of ambulance. I don't see how she missed it. She's the one doing the recording. It's so like she saw everything but the, the bright lights yes. and the sirens. Um, but okay. there is a nine year old boy that is in a coma yes. situation. Yes. And I feel like everyone pray for him. Yeah, so his family sued Travis Scott. Um, but. I think it's Travis Scott's fault, but I also, in a sense, don't feel like like it was a ritual or anything like that. Oh, yeah, people are saying it's a sacrifice. I kind of, I kind of believe it. I, be, I believe that there is like a society with the whole um, what is it? The oh, Illuminati. I do. Like it's not like a high power, like on the level of, of God. But I do think it's a community of people who are powerful and make anything happen, and they do actually. I feel like to sacrifice somebody. Because we look at every time somebody passed away, they get bigger. Yes, and it's like in the celebrity family, like Maggie Stallion, her mom had passed, and then also she blows up. Really? Yeah. Kanye West. But Kanye was on already. That's what I was going to say. But he was in an accident where he nearly died. But I was going to say, also I feel like his mom was sacrificed because he was already like big mm-hmm. when his but mom passed away. But then he blew up even more. But no, no he was already huge for his mom. But he, no, he, now he, he has a clothing but line. But he's and, and, and he lost popularity because he's not crazy. Like people can see that he's. But he's still he's making like, billions yeah, he of dollars. Like he's a billionaire now. But people can see. I feel like he's not. I don't think where he needs to be. Well, in our community, like the the black people, we we would mess with him. Yeah, we all the time. Don't go on comment. There are a lot of black people that still fuck. But we did, but not everybody. And I and I just feel like. He lost his popularity. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's his mind. He was always advocating for Kanye whenever I talk to him. And I'd be saying, like, he is a coon. I'd be doing that. <laughs> and see, before he was like, oh, this, this, this dude, no. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I liked, liked it, Kanye. Kind of, I, I really feel like a lot of celebrities do sacrifice people to gain popularity, success. I, I really do. Love that. I think there is literally a secret society that you just didn't have will make sure that you have fame and money. I feel like it's true. Of course, it's not like the devil, you know, and God, but I think it is people that make sure to cover up things. My thing is the reason why I say it's Travis Scott's fault, not because of rituals or anything like that. He's the one who, if you're saying it's his fault, he's the one that's one of the rituals. Well, no, what he does, though, is like they have that rage thing where, but he 
he kind of encourages people to rush the stage. And when you rush the That's stage, terrible. like you, like when it's thousands upon thousands of people and there's no seats or bars or anything, just a fence in front. Like I said earlier, when we tried to take this earlier, we was at one concert. <laughs> well, I don't know if y'all gonna see it, I don't know. But uh, we were in the front row and there was a fence there that you just could not, that was like screwed into the ground. You could not move it. And people would be coming up and pushing like, hey, we stopped it. Like, we prevented them, like, hey, y'all need to back up. But this is basically what happened at this concert. But the worst thing is, is even after barriers fell and people fell down, people just trampled them. I'm like, how can you walk on a human being and not care? Like, how heartless do you have to be to see somebody on the ground and people running and to just walk on them? That is so crazy to me. And one thing I want to say is, like, how you mentioned the Bone concert. Bone was saying stuff. Yeah, they you know they were saying because people was throwing stuff. You yeah, know, people were getting around. They were saying it was throwing like, like we'll cut the show, quit doing this, or we'll stop the show. They were saying they were getting like rowdy that. when it got late. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like we'll stop the show, cut it out. We're trying to stop it, and we'll look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. And yeah, there was a video of a girl. Like, because uh, it was being filmed, the performance, going to a cameraman, like, saying, hey, y'all need to stop the show. There's a person here dying. The cameraman basically ignored her. Mm. And I also heard, too, that there was cops that was right in the, like, front trying to stop everything, and they would stop to take, like, video or pictures of Travis Scott. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot going There's, like, tons of videos online of people at these concerts that she wouldn't believe what was going on there. And then, like, his show still continued. It was like for the was a day period. Yeah. It was like three days in a row. Yeah, and they didn't stop the next show. I'm going to cancel the whole event. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, moving along. Our next topic is Love and Hip Hop Miami. Sheila, who is Ace's wife, was doing a retreat for black women. And we did the show earlier. We taped it, and um, it didn't go as planned. So what I'm going to do is a little playback of what happened earlier. Go ahead. <laughs> perspective right now only because you of all people can understand how important it is for a black woman to have safety yes. and feel accepted yes wait let me finish i will do you understand what i'm saying when i say that you understand the feeling of sometimes yes let me finish but you're not going to check me though i'm not checking but i feel like you are okay but can you let me finish as well because she is raising black children and that's where it starts with the mother my women know that this is for them. Like, women who come to our retreat know. They know, and they get it immediately, and it's like that black women. Not only black women. We don't only do events for black women. I don't need to explain that. You should explain it because you're throwing the event. No, I explain it when it needs to be explained. Right here, it doesn't.
highly triggered me. And me too. It was two parts. It was the first episode to where she was inviting him to the hurricane. And then it was multiple episodes, episodes where they told she was highly offended. And even mm-hmm. uh, Amara Negra, and how do you pronounce her name, got involved with it. But I was offended because it's like, why is she responsible to teach other to teach women who decide to have black children how to raise their black kids? Why is that put on her? I can tell you why. Because we're all children of God. God hate when we But hold on a second. No, let, 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 I got to speak right now before you go into that. I have to speak right now because there's a few things I have to say for one. Like, it's a, a retreat is somewhere you go for vacation to unwind, to not think about things, to let loose and be yourself, to recuperate from the troubles of the world. Why the hell would you ask for a, a retreat for black women to be about them teaching non black women how to raise their biracial children? That doesn't make any sense. Won't you set up something like that? Right. That doesn't make any sense. They're not. The, the, and this is the reason why black women do need a. But hold on a second. This is the reason why there's even a black women retreat. Everybody can be supposed to mammy for them, and we supposed to put everybody ahead of ourselves and take care of everybody. It's even when black men get with these non-black women, they raise them up to how much better they are. We gotta teach y'all how to raise y'all mixed kids. What the, what the fuck kind of question, question is that? That, that was, was ridiculous. And, that, and Princess Love pissed me off with that. You know, you know I guess she's saying her mom didn't know. Well, she laid with the black man. You should be going to your father about your black side. You should be going to your black grandmother, your black aunties, your black cousins. Like, go to them. Don't expect black women as a whole to help y'all because y'all try laying down with black men. That doesn't make any sense to me. We're not responsible for you I, I feel like, like they don't want... Black, black women have, have anything. anything. No, you, you know, know even if it's a damn retreat, retreat. they, they want to be involved. involved. Come on now, how is that discriminatory? Like, yeah, you know, when white people and Mexicans, Mexicans have, have shit all the time. time. Like in other groups of people have like white like, men. You would never ask a married couple or three. You would never ask. I just think we have a right to have women. We do when nobody gives a race there. A married couple retreat for single people to be allowed on a married couple. Like, you're like, 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 like
for black women only, for black women to be amongst themselves. Like, luckily we have our own selves here. We as three black women together, we can have each other to lean on. You know, there are, no, there are black women that don't have that. And, and that's what this retreater is for. It's not discriminatory. It's not to talk bad about Mexican women, Indian women, white women. It's not, it's not to make, to make fun, fun of anybody, anybody or to exclude anybody. It's just some things that black women go through only black women can understand, like what happened before C here, for example. You know, how to go through a work environment, microaggressions that you deal with uh, in just society, just dealing with life. That is what, why I feel like retreats like that are necessary and what happened with my brother there is exactly what happens to black women when they try to do for themselves or when they try to you know treat themselves people feel like they're slighted like no you shouldn't be giving your time and energy into yourself you should be giving it to me and everybody else that's, that's how, how black, black women are viewed. We've always, always been mammies in America. Hell, we used to have to breastfeed. In slavery, slavery, they used to have to breast breast breastfeed their master's kids. kids. Teach them how to bathe. Those are the ones that were seen as to be disgusting and not worthy. From, from the beginning of society, black, black women have mammied for everybody but themselves. And, and something as simple as a retreat, a place for them to go on vacation with each other, bond with each other, recuperate, relax, get, just enjoy themselves, somehow trigger people. That makes no sense to me. Princess Love, that was stupid. That was really stupid. For her to say, you can lay down with black men if you can't raise the kids. That makes no sense to me, especially when, like I was trying to say earlier, when society, when society you have TikTok videos of black dudes saying how they don't like black girls. You'll have TikTok videos of non-black women saying why they're better than black women. And then we have a retreat for ourselves and we're supposed to be like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And there's nothing wrong so we can copy. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, in a racial relationships or biracial people because the girl running the thing is biracial herself. She said she, this is for a retreat for women that identify as black. The woman who she didn't invite specifically says she is Latina. She does not identify as black. So that's why she wasn't invited. And it's not to be mean. It was literally a retreat for black women to recuperate and heal and deal with themselves amongst, amongst themselves. themselves. And, and healing and princess love, 
You need to know, part of black women's healing is not continuing to mammy and fucking teach other people how to do normal shit in society, like raise their kids. She's like, I want to be around women that yeah. look like me so that I know other people went through what I went through. And although she's biracial, she is a little... Um, she, she, she does. If you looked at her, you wouldn't have known. Yeah. She looks she's black. Dark, black, 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 or what you expect of a biracial And then also, irritation because every, like, when you have all sorts of communities, all sorts of groups, um, like, you don't see me when it's gay pride parade. Oh, well, well, me. Or what about straight people? Although there are people that do that, those people are ridiculous. But it's not as out there as it is, like, black women have, like, the situation with Sheila. And it's literally not harming anybody. But, but what's weird about it is if the, the retreat is specific for because you do deal with certain microaggressions as a black woman that other women don't deal with. And there's nothing wrong with getting amongst yourselves to, hey, how do you cope with it? What give me some suggestions of how's it working for you? What works for you? How do I do this? That is a black woman issue, it has nothing to do with who you fucking, has nothing to do with who you gave birth to. And like I said in the um, previous video, she had other retreats. And she, yeah, she's not racist. Yeah. She just was, Mary was just there when she invited her. And Mary seems like a sweet woman. She, she seems like such a sweet woman. I feel like Princess Love dragging out more shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Princess Love is trying to check her. I'm going to keep trying to that table I'm checking you, right? And then she responds. Like, you can try to check her about her resort, but tell her not to check you about her resort. Yeah, but she tried to check her. Right, it made no sense. Did she give you what you came for no man? But I don't think Neri seemed to be cool about it, although I did find her conversation with her husband, Noriega. Uh, he's like, like, well, why, why not? You, you, you got, got black children, you know. Like, like kind of like you, you, like, like as if you could be black, black by association. And, no. and then that also bothers me because, okay, okay. Bi biracial people always, always wanted to have, be in their own category. So her children aren't just black; they're biracial. Start, 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 start freaking by, by racial retreat. Of and there would be nothing wrong. And I think that should they work. Show, I'm not black, but then you're upset because there's a retreat for black women. You're not black, you're not black women, but you're not black but you're not black women. You're not black women. You're not black women. You're black women. You're not black women. black women. You're not 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 on, on how, how to raise them, or if you're uh, somebody, somebody that's non-black raising a black child, yes, they, they should have the retreats, and I wouldn't even want to impose on that. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm a mother of a black child. You can't pick and choose when your kids are seen as black or biracial. It's just one or the other. People always have that saying, oh, and I swear to God, I would support it if you had a, a mother of biracial children group retreat, if you had a mothers of black children retreat, if you had a, a, bi a interracial couples retreat, I would support it. I would support it. Would support it. If you had a Latino women retreat, if you had a, a, a Italian women retreat, I support it. All of it. I support it all. Anything for healing and bettering all people. Like that's why I got heated with my brother because I'm not. Saying, I love all people. I want everybody, everybody to, be to be successful, to heal, to be the best selves. And if you have to do it in certain settings, I'm okay with that too. But they'll, I don't know, they'll do that because they're going to need that black woman to put to clarity. Well, well uh, shit, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so please leave comments down below. Um, tell us what you think of the video. <laughs>
definitely want to know, know your, thoughts, your thoughts, your opinions, because, of course, unfortunately, we're not, we're not going to go live and do our interviews at the same time because of the system that we use. But, but we do want you to interact with us and give us your feedback. All right, so I think this is actually our last topic, huh? Yeah. The, um, when we talk about the young men that yep. are across the Okay, so the mother of a 14 year old girl, which I believe her name is just Shayla, who went missing a few months ago, was arrested. And it's because, okay, so apparently the young lady ran away from home because she wasn't being fed. Yeah, her, her, her and her three year old brother were not being fed, they were being abused, so she intentionally ran away. Um, it wasn't like she was kidnapped or anything like that. And her she mother, had been missing for a month. Yeah, she was, now her mother is in custody, and the kids are now uh, in her custody. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you heard that, that story. Because, because uh, her, her mom was in the media all the time saying how they weren't uh, covering her story because she was a black girl, you know, playing in that and all of that. When in actuality, she was abusing her children. And that's, and that's like, like some scary ass, ass shit. Mm -hmm. To think, and, and then she took advantage of, you know, because black girls are underreported when they do go missing. She took advantage of that. Granted, I'm so glad this girl was found and that she was safe. But that does says a lot that there there are children that are in dire situations in the child the protective services. They're not. They're failing these children. It is the terrible thing is. They go into the wrong one. The, 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 the parents that are good, that are actually good, they take away for like drug offenses. If you have weed in your system at some point, you feel drugs. I don't know if they take away. No, well, they do. I've seen it. I've seen it. Oh, but there are like gay couples too. Like I have a friend who went, yeah, to go through CPS because she was married to a woman. Oh, and they got the home. See, See shit like that. that. Like, that's that's ridiculous. ridiculous. And these people are usually loving, and the kids are usually well taken care of. And then they'll give kids to people that are fucking toxic. And the, problem, the foster care system is terrible. That we talked about last time too. I always forget his name. Uh, the, oh my God! Uh, I do. I know. Uh, I know. I watched the documentary on him on Netflix. His story was so sad, so sad. What happened to that little boy? That story breaks my heart every time I think about it. Like that, what they did to that boy, the way his mom and her boyfriend treated that boy was terrible because they suspected he was gay. And he was only like six, seven years. And he, all he talked about when he was in school was how much he loved his mom and wanted to make her happy. That story broke my heart. And, and they never they never catch the right ones because she didn't even have custody at him at first. Her gay brother did. And they took him away from him. And they didn't like take him away from her. They gave him back to her. And he was loved in that home. He was taken care of in that home. And now he's gone. And he, he was like yeah, he was like eight. He was just a baby. Just a baby. So I just wish the best for I believe her name was just Shayla and her three year old brother. I'm glad that they, they were rescued, but hopefully they're not ended up in another toxic situation because child support, the protective services, and the foster care system is all trash. Yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to harm a child. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's got to be pretty damn easy. The same way I look at like little animals, it's like they're vulnerable. You want to protect I have an instinct to protect them. It's sad. Yeah, we, we had a lot going on, as y'all can see. Any final thoughts? That's it. Any final thoughts? All right, thank you all for tuning in.